Money Roots is made possible by the support of our sponsor, Rooted Planning Group. Are you ready to take control of your financial future? Look no further than Rooted Planning Group, your trusted partner in financial well-being. At www.rootedpg.com, you'll discover a wealth of resources and expertise to help you thrive financially. Rooted Planning Group specializes in personalized financial planning, investment management, and retirement strategies. They understand that every financial journey is unique, and they're here to guide you every step of the way. With a team of experienced advisors, Rooted Planning Group is committed to helping you cultivate a secure and prosperous future. Visit www.rootedpg.com today to learn more about how Rooted Planning Group can help you grow your money roots. Welcome to Money Roots, the podcast where personal finance gets personal. Each week, Amy and her guests dig deep into the world of finance, making it more approachable and understandable for everyone, no matter where you are on your financial journey. From savings and investments to budgeting and planning, we'll bring you practical advice, inspiring stories, and expert insights. We believe that everyone has the potential to grow a healthy financial future, and we're here to help you nurture it. So whether you're a financial guru or just starting to plant the seeds of your financial knowledge, this is the place for you. Get ready to uncover the tools and strategies that can help you thrive financially. So without further ado, let's dive into today's episode of Money Roots. Hello, Money Roots listeners. This is Liz Zemeck back this week, and we're going to wrap up this series about um, the home. And this week, what I'm going to do is just um, run through some questions that I've gotten over the past few weeks um, from friends and clients uh, relating to the home and just some, some questions to, to wrap this all up. So you can kind of think that this is like a, a potpourri, um, podcast where we just throw a bunch of stuff in and it, and it turns into something, um, that is very helpful and useful for, for you guys, um, is my intention anyway. So the first thing that um, I had a friend ask me actually was the importance of a home inspector. So we're going to actually go back for this one to when you're looking at a home to purchase, what are some things that you need to keep in mind so that you set yourself up for success in the long run? Um, so the, when we think about home inspection, it's something that you definitely want to have done. Um, so the first thing that you want to do is make sure you're getting a home inspector that will provide you with references um, or someone that in your area is has a good reputation, is, is um, sought after. The other thing before you kind of engage into um, a contract with them is to make sure you read the contract so you know that what you're getting with the inspector um, and make sure you read through the the entire contract so that you understand what what it is that that you're getting what their expertise maybe is um, and what you can expect from them so typically they'll go in they'll they'll write a report for you um, I've seen that done a few different ways. A lot of inspectors these days are utilizing technology uh, so that you can access that um, electronically and you can even share like with your realtor um, or the homeowner that you're looking to purchase from if you need some information to support the um, items that you're wishing to change or that you're, you're leveraging for your offer. Um, so that's something that you also want to look at. The other thing is um, you definitely want to make sure sometimes with the house that you're purchasing, there may be some specialty items that you want to make sure that you're getting a, an inspector that's familiar with those items. And um, so it, it may be that you need to um, it, expand past just a normal home inspector. A lot of times realtors will have references um, or inspectors that they, they've they enjoyed working with um, in the past. So that's, that's a good place to start. Um, but that's definitely number one before you make that purchase offer or decide um, that you want to have that house is that you're going to um, follow through on making sure that you have it inspected. 
And that leads into the next question I received, which was, if you've, you're already in a house and you didn't really realize all of the projects that needed to be done on the house, um, and so you're kind of in it, right? And you, you're realizing, oh no, there's a lot of stuff that needs to be fixed in here. Um, how do you go about prioritizing what items to do? And I think this is a really great question because I think sometimes people, you know, they, the location of the house is great or something about the house draws them in, but they've, they've not kind of looked under the covers and um, found some of those items that really needed to be fixed or weren't anticipating how much those things would cost. So when you're looking at something like that, that feels like this big problem, my advice is to make a list of the items that you want to fix or that you know need to be fixed in order for you to safely continue to live in the home. But this could be room by room, walk through and just make a list in each room of the things that you know need to be changed. Um, And so get that all out on one paper and then write the amount that you think will it will take to repair those. So is it going to be a $1,000 repair job or is it going to be a, does it need a whole remodel? Does the room need to be gutted down to the studs and redone? Is there electrical that needs to be updated? Um, and then you can go from there and figure out what are I, how I would approach that is What are the major things that for safety issues actually need to be done? And look at how you could tackle those. Are there small chunks of that that can be um, taken care of first? Um, Or is it something that like you really do, you need to save up for that goal um, and have that work done, possibly even look into a home equity loan um, or are, and then are there some projects that are smaller that you could kind of knock out um, and get some momentum on getting the house um, up to code or up to your living standards where you want the house to be. So A lot of that is um, kind of like when we were walking through making your household binder, um, take it one step at a time and do what you can manage and just starting somewhere that will help you kind of build that momentum and then get get your house to a place that is um, someplace you love to be and you look forward to coming to each day, um, maybe after work, that's an enjoyable place for you. The next um, pointer that actually someone, a realtor friend of mine pointed out to me and and said it would be a great topic to talk about was um, the importance of having a good contractor in your contacts. Um, So I think having one or two people that you can rely on if you're not someone that does work yourself um, or does repairs on your own, making sure you have a good general contractor in your um, Rolodex, so to speak, um, or in your list of contacts is a really, really good idea. Um, This can help in a few different ways. Um, One, if you're looking at a home and you've got a contractor you know and you trust, you could pay them to come out and look at the home with you. Um, maybe they have some ideas or if you know there's things about the home that you already want to change, they may be able to spend some time and give you a quote on the things that you want to change so you know ahead of time about how much money it would cost to change those items from someone that you know and you trust. Um, the other time that would come up good is with the projects that we just talked about. So if you've made your list and maybe you have your contractor come over and give you a quote on some of the items, you have an idea of how much it's going to cost and um, you can kind of proceed from there. But there's a few different ways to determine you know, what contractor you want to put in your book, right? So um, one, you can, you can start calling around. I know I've, we've had plenty of clients and people that I know that have said, well, I've called 20 contractors, three showed up and one provided me a quote. So, uh, that's kind of sometimes how you have to do it. But I think do find that realtors are really great resources. Um, they know the people in the, in your community that um, come through on those projects or have some that they 
um, will connect you with. So that that's another great resource for finding a good contractor. Um, you can also go on the internet. There's often a lot of review sites that you can look at that people will leave reviews. Make sure you read through those um, before you get work done. And then also making sure you have a good contract in place with the contractor before you have work done. So know what you're getting into. Um, make sure you put some deadlines in there. And um, I think that's another really great idea. So that's something that's definitely extremely important is um, you've got one or two good general contractors that, that you're in contact with or that you know that you can call um, if you have something happen. And then the last item that I wanted to touch base on as far as with your home is creating a good drop point in your house. Um, so Carrie on our team actually um, brought this up and I think it's a great point is having a place in your house. Usually it's someplace near your the door that you come in um, each day but create a drop place in your house. So this would be in my house, I bought like magnetic file holders that actually just stick right on my fridge. And that's where we put all of the incoming mail and then sort it from there so that um, if it's something that needs to be filed, it goes into a file spot and we know, okay, we've got to get that into our binder. Um, there's to-do items. So if there's bills that need to be paid or invitations that need to be um, responded to, um, things like that, I've got a whole little spot for those. So it, as it, things are coming in, they're getting separated and organized. So you don't end up with just a giant pile of papers that you dread going through. If you you keep up on it and, and maintain that, it makes it a lot easier to sort through and file your papers. Um, the same thing, I mean, with our inboxes, right? Um, I get plenty of emails throughout the day. And so with those, I've set up rules so they automatically file. But the ones that don't, you know, spend five, 10 minutes just making sure you're looking through those each day so that you don't end up with a big mountain that you then have to figure out how you're going like, to sort through all of that. But in, in our home, um, what we have right when we come in the door is just what I call my drop zone. So it's where my daughter's backpack goes um, from daycare. And I know to check it every night and pull her cute little projects that she made out um, and swap out any clothes that may need to be changed. And that's kind of our zone that that's where all of that kind of stuff goes. My briefcase goes there. My husband's briefcase, well, backpack he uses, he doesn't use briefcase, but all of our things go there so that we know that's, there's a two reasons why I love that. One, it keeps everything in one spot and we know that's our drop zone. That's where we're going to be making sure our things are ready to go for the next day. But it's also a way for me mentally to set down all of my stuff that from beforehand. So especially when I'm coming home for the day, I'm dropping all of that down and I'm setting it there. And now I'm home and I don't need to, to be dealing with all of that extra stuff, right? So, um, and I know that when I come to that space, that's I'm intentionally, that's in my mind, that's where I'm going, that's what I'm going to be doing. Um, so I think a drop zone in your home is a really, really great thing. It's it's worked out really well for my family. Um, and I would encourage you to, to look at setting something like that up in your your house. It really, ours is not very big and it doesn't need to be anything fancy or anything like that. Um, I just have like a little shoe bin or show, shoes go in and then um, some hooks that we each put our bags on. And um, it's, again, it's not anything spectacular um, and it's not anything huge, but it, it is a way for us to kind of set down whatever we had going on before we came home and take, take that off kind of and come home and be present with one another. Um, and it's something that, that has worked out really well for us. And um, I know I'm, I'm grateful that Carrie brought that up because it is something that um, our family does and we have found to be helpful. Um, and I, I think it would be a, something that's really great for 
And this is one, you know, whether you rent or you own, I think is a really great uh, thing to set up within your home. So those are the the items that kind of came through over the past few episodes that clients and friends have uh, mentioned to me and I thought would be really great to talk through this week. It's not necessarily just one theme. It's a bunch of little things. Um, and I hope you found something that applied to you and that you have been able to try out and put into practice in your own home. And um, we really are grateful that you uh, took the time to listen to this. And we do hope that you found a few items to carry with you throughout um, the throughout the day and um, can implement in your home. Thanks for listening. We'll catch you next week. You've been listening to Money Roots, your go-to podcast for making personal finance accessible and approachable. Thanks for joining us today. Amy and her guests have enjoyed guiding you through the roots of your financial journey. Remember, whether you're planting new seeds of financial knowledge or nurturing the growth of your existing financial plans, Money Roots is here to support you every step of the way. Be sure to follow them on Facebook, X, LinkedIn, and Instagram for more resources. And of course, subscribe to Money Roots wherever you get your podcasts so you never miss an episode. A big thank you to the sponsor, Rooted Planning Group, for making this show possible. At Rooted Planning Group, they're committed to helping you cultivate a thriving financial future. Until next time, keep growing your money roots.